Because the, the Human Rights Commission had been brought into this by the Prime Minister who, uh, who attacked them for wasting government money and the court's time. Mm. Uh, the Human Rights Commission put out a statement today saying they had nothing to do with the case. They dealt with this last year, it was right. over, the case was taken privately uh, by an employee of QUT. Well, well, I mean, the facts don't support that. Under the, hum um, the Racial Discrimination Act, the Human Rights Commission does have the power to knock out vexatious claims. So the Human Rights Commission would have received this complaint from, uh, in this case, the complainant was a lady called Cindy Pryor, and um, if, if they thought that the complaint was vexatious, they could have kicked it out. They didn't. They went through a... They said they dealt with it, it was finished, and then the case is separate. They didn't bring it. Well... I don't, I don't think the facts that's, that's their that. statement. That's I what I'm saying. Think. Anthony Albanese. Well, the Human Rights Commission doesn't bring cases. The Human Rights Commission role is to uh, promote conciliation. And last year, they dealt with more than 20,000 complaints. How many do we know about? We know about a couple. And the focus at the moment, there's this huge campaign about Bill Leake's cartoon, for example. Now, Bill Leake's cartoon has covered not just by 18C, you can have a debate about offence, but it's also covered by 18D. Well, we which, don't know that. Which though, provides you, for... That's yet which, to be determined. You, you got your go. Now, I get my freedom of speech. <laughs> now, <laughs> and, I mean, that's the problem here. We do... The idea that we do not have freedom of speech in this country is, quite frankly, absurd. This is a government without an agenda for the economy or education or health, looking for conflict, not looking for solutions, looking to complain, looking to divide. And I want a country that is stronger by unity. And one of the things that the Racial Discrimination Act and uh, the, the Sex Discrimination Act and these pieces of legislation do is to try to promote cohesion and harmony and unity. And, of course, I don't think that... Uh, Bill Leake, I don't like the cartoon, but there won't be any consequences of it. Uh, these uh, QUT students, um, the legal... You spoke about the legal processes. The legal processes were gone through and it was found, quite rightly, that there was no case to answer. So th this obsession, whenever the government gets into trouble, as it did under Tony Abbott for a while there, and now at the moment without an agenda, they go into the drawer and out comes these issues to divide people. And I just don't think that there is a massive problem here. If there is in terms of the threshold, one of the things that the Human Rights Commission have said is that they should have greater power perhaps to just dismiss vexatious claims and to do it quicker. If that's, the case, that, if that's the case, well, they say they don't have uh, appropriate powers. It's true. Their, their statement today they uh, made that. precisely that point and they're arguing that they've asked the Attorney-General to raise the bar, the threshold, uh, but he hasn't done it. And they haven't done it. They haven't taken any action because they're not interested in solutions. They're interested in a big debate over a cartoon in particular which has uh, been a focus of page one stories day after day after day. But the debate, presumably, is because action has been taken against the cartoonists. But, it wouldn't be a debate if the there human, hadn't been action taken. But not by the Human Rights Commission. Action's been taken by some individuals who've put in a complaint. I have no doubt that it'll go nowhere. OK, well, let's go back to James Patterson on that because I'm sure you want to respond to that. Thank you, yeah. I just don't know how you can say, Albo, that there's been no consequences of 18C, particularly for these students in the QUT case. Three and a half years of their lives were taken up by this legal dispute. Thankfully, they've got excellent pro bono legal representation, but their lawyers have, have estimated that their legal fees would be up to six hundred dollars to $700,000 if they had to defend themselves. That's, that's the financial cost. The personal cost is one of these students, Callum Thwaites, was studying an education degree. And after he graduated, his dream was to go and teach in remote Indigenous schools to teach Indigenous kids. But he knew, after he'd been smeared in this case, that he was always going to be just one Google search away from losing his job. That is the real cost of these Look, laws. I'm, I'm that not is saying the cost it's not an lives. issue. I'm not saying it's not an issue. But let's look at it. It isn't because of 18C being there. It, it isn't because is. of 18D being there. It isn't because of that. It's because of the threshold. And the Human Rights Commission itself today have publicly called for a solution 
to, uh, to those issues in terms of vexation claims. Why doesn't the government seize that opportunity? Okay, well, uh, very, very briefly on this. Okay, yes. Well, the Attorney General has it within his power to actually raise the threshold. Uh, will he do it? I'm open to that, but I don't believe on its own it will be sufficient to stop a future QUT case. And we know that because Gillian Triggs said on the 7.30 report tonight that in her view and in the Commission's view, the QUT case had substance. So she thinks a case like that has substance and needs to go on to the next stage, in this case to the courts. That means I have no confidence that any change to that law would stop cases like this happening again. Um, just a quick question, because um, I mentioned earlier Malcolm Turnbull came out after the Federal Court dismissed this case. Malcolm Turnbull came out and blamed the Human Rights Commission. He said they were the ones wasting the money. But of course, as we mentioned earlier, they did not put the case to the court. So did he miss the mark there? Well, the Human Rights Commission's uh, handling of this case has been so appalling that even Gillian Triggs has appointed a lawyer to investigate it and to examine the Commission's conduct. As Georgina mentioned, one of the failings of the Commission was to wait almost 14 months before notifying the students that they were subject to a complaint and to give them three days' notice that they had to attend a compulsory conciliation. Some of those students weren't even able to arrange legal representation for themselves. So the Human Rights Commission absolutely has questions to answer. Over this case. Uh, 